Hello everyone, this video contains all the information you need to get set up and ready for your new hatchling leopard tortoise. It's based on my experience on keeping hatchling leopard tortoises and extensive research that I've done over the years and is what I'd recommend for beginners or new owners of these hatchlings. I hope you enjoy the video and find it useful in getting set up and ready for your new hatchling leopard tortoise. So the topics that I'll be covering are where to put your setup, what to use, what size table is required, what type of table is required, how to set up the table, and I'll be doing a demonstration on this, and when to set up the table. So the first topic I'll be covering is where to put your hatchling's new home. Your hatchling needs to be indoors for at least the first four years, after which you can put it outside in a heated shed or a heated greenhouse. Although at any age your tortoise will benefit enormously by being out in the sunshine, but only when the temperatures permit, so it needs to be above 22 degrees C, and you'll also need to monitor them the whole time, and also make sure that they're in a predator-proof and escape-proof enclosure. I'll go through when and how to put your hatchling tortoise outside in another video. It should be in a room that has natural light, it should be away from windows, unless you have blinds or curtains to prevent your tortoise overheating on hot days. It should be away from radiators or heat sources, again to prevent your tortoise overheating when the heating's on. It should also be in a quiet environment, as leopard tortoises are shy and they like to be in a quiet area of your home. Also, you need to have electrical sockets nearby. One for the basking lamp and another spare socket, just in case you need to add any extra heat. Normal household temperatures are fine, but if you do find the temperatures are too cold at night in your tortoise table, then you can either add a thermostatically controlled heater into the room where your tortoise is, or you can add a thermostatically controlled ceramic bulb heater into your tortoise table. The ceramic bulb heater must be a nighttime one that doesn't give off any light, so that we can mimic what they have in the wild, which is dark at night time and bright and sunny during the day. A lounge or study or unused room or unused bedroom is fine. So hopefully you found somewhere you can put your hatchling leopard tortoise. Next we'll be covering what type of tortoise table you'll need. By the way, a tortoise table is a box or tub with no lid, normally made from wood or plastic and it usually forms part of an existing table. The first point to mention is that open top tables, so anything that doesn't have a lid on is ideal. Anything that's enclosed, like a glass vivarium, is not suitable for your tortoise. The reasons why I wouldn't recommend a vivarium for your tortoise is because it prevents good air circulation and ventilation, it doesn't offer hot and cold areas for your tortoise to move in and out of, also the glass sides of the vivarium means that your tortoise will constantly be trying to get to the other side of the glass and they could bruise themselves in the process as well as becoming very distressed in this type of environment. So we need to pick an open top tortoise table. Next I'll go through some examples of open top tortoise tables that you could use. This is a tortoise table that we built a while ago. It was six foot by four foot and it was made into two identical areas for two different tortoises. One lived in this area and the other lived the other side. It had removable partitions so it was easy to clean. This is an example of an open top tub which is suitable for a small hatchling. It has solid sides so they can't see through and it's made of plastic so it's easy to clean. And this is an example of how I've joined three tubs together to give my hatchlings extra space when they've outgrown the single tub that you saw in the previous picture. Check out other tortoise tables on the internet for more ideas. It doesn't have to be expensive or fancy, it just needs to cover the basics, which are it needs to be open topped, it needs to be large enough, which I'll be going through shortly, it needs to have solid sides so they can't see through, the height of the sides needs to be twice the length of the tortoise, so for example if your tortoise is 10 centimetres long then the sides need to be 20 centimetres high. It needs to be made of untreated wood or plastic. If you are using wood then I'd recommend covering the wood with a plastic liner. This will prevent the wood rotting and it will be easy to clean as well as being hygienic. And if possible it should be extendable for when your tortoise has outgrown it 
or have another larger table or enclosure ready for when the time arrives. Next we'll cover what size table is required. As a basic rule, the tortoise table should be 10 times the length of the tortoise squared. So for example, if your tortoise is 10 centimetres long, then the area it will need is approximately 100 centimetres by 100 centimetres. If you already have a tortoise table and you want to know if it's big enough for your new hatchling or when your tortoise will have outgrown it, then we need to do some maths. But don't worry if maths isn't your thing as I'll be going through some examples that will hopefully make this clearer. So first we need to find the squared area of your tortoise table. Secondly, we need to find the square root of the squared area in step one. And thirdly, we need to divide the square root calculated in step two by 10. The first example that I'll go through is measuring in feet. So step one is to find the squared area of your tortoise table. So in this example, it's six foot long by four foot wide. So we do six times four equals 24. So the result of step one is 24 foot square. Next, we need to find the square root of 24. And we do that by pressing the square root button, which gives us the result of step two as 4.8989. Then we take this figure and divide by 10. Which gives us a result in step three of 0.49. So this means when your tortoise is 0.49 feet long, it will have outgrown its six foot by four foot enclosure. This is another example measured in centimeters. And we follow the identical calculations as we've done previously. So the first step is to get the squared area of your tortoise table. So in this case, it's 91.5 centimetres times 61 centimetres. And that gives us 5581.5. Then we find the square root of 5581.5. And this gives us 74.7094375. Then we divide this by 10 to give us the result of 7.47. So in this example, your tortoise will have outgrown this tub when it's 7.47 centimetres long. And the final calculation that I'm going to go through is if you've got an odd shaped tortoise table, like you can see in this picture. So following the same calculations as before, step one is to find the squared area of your tortoise table. So we take the larger area first. So as before, this was six foot by four foot and this gives us a squared area of 24 foot. Then we'll take the smaller area, which is three foot by one foot. So this gives us a squared area of three foot. Then we add the two figures together. So 24 foot plus three foot gives us 27 foot. Then we move on to step two. So we need to find the square root of 27 foot, which gives us 5.196. Then we divide this by 10 to give us 0.52. So your tortoise will have outgrown this odd shaped tortoise table when it's 0.52 feet long. Next, I'll be covering growth rates. Hatchling leopard tortoises grow at different rates, somewhere between one to four inches per year. So it's important to measure the length of your tortoise regularly to make sure it hasn't outgrown its enclosure. The following chart gives a rough guideline to the size of the tortoise table or enclosure that's required for one tortoise as it grows and it's based on a growth rate of one inch per year. The age on the chart is only a very rough guideline as to how old your tortoise might be in relation to the length of your tortoise. As I mentioned earlier, hatchlings and young tortoises grow at different rates, even if they're fed on identical food and kept in the same enclosure. So I strongly recommend using your tortoise's actual length to calculate the size of table required, rather than guessing the size of table required based on the age of your tortoise. If you have more than one tortoise and they're similar sizes, then you can simply multiply the length of the tortoise enclosure required by the number of tortoises that you have. If you want more information on how to measure your tortoise, then I do have another video on this. Next, we'll be covering what items you'll need in your tortoise table and how to set up the tortoise table. 
So these are the items that I'd recommend getting to set up your tortoise table and I'll be going through these as we build the table together. So we have in here a UVA UVB basking bulb with its holder. We've got dishes for food and water. We've got cuttlefish, we've got a thermometer. We've got a fluorescent lighting controller with the tube, which is a reptile UVB tube. The fluorescent lighting controller and UVB tube are optional and I'd recommend getting these if the room where your table is is dark or the basking bulb you're using doesn't contain UVB. And we have a hide and some moss. And we also need some soil and some play pit sand. Okay, let's get started on setting up this table. In this demo, I'll be using a tub, which is suitable for a hatchling up to seven and a half centimetres long. So the first item you need is something to put the tub on. So here I'm just using an old table. It's not quite big enough for the tub and the stand where the heating and lighting is attached to. So I'll be adding an extra piece on top of this table. Now the extra piece that I need is on top of the table. I'll just go and grab the tub. The tub that I'm using is a home base mixing tray and it's 91.5 by 61 by 20 centimetres high. Okay, this is how I want the table to be set up. This is how we've got space either side for the stand to go over the top. The next thing to do is to mix the substrate, which is made up of 50-50 soil and sand. So for this I'll be using home based topsoil, or you could use any other topsoil that doesn't have chemicals or fertilisers added to it. And I'll be mixing that with play pit sand, and it must be play pit sand and not builder sand. So here we have equal measures of both soil and sand. Obviously you can use bigger pots than I'm using. And then pop them into the tub. and then mix them together. I found that some topsoils that I've used are more sandier than others. So if this is the case, then just reduce the amount of play sand that you mix in with the soil. This is the sort of mix that you're looking for. We need to carry on preparing the substrate mix until we get to the depth that we're after. So the depth we're aiming for is a minimum of three quarters the height of your tortoise. In this example, this hatchling is approximately one and a quarter inches high so we're laying for approximately one inch of substrate. It's just over an inch actually, but that's about right. This mix is slightly damper than is ideal as my bags of soil and sand were left out in the rain. So if your mix is like the one seen here, then I'd recommend leaving it to dry out at room temperature for a couple of days before using it in your tortoise table. The next thing we're going to do is get the hide, the water bowl, the food bowl and the cuttlefish in here. Please make sure that any items that you put in your tortoise table and the tortoise table itself are thoroughly disinfected with tortoise safe disinfectant first. I do have another video on what disinfectants I use and how I make this up if you want more information on this. We need to make sure that the hide isn't too close to the sides, otherwise they could climb up and potentially get out of the tortoise table. We also need to make sure there's enough room for the baby to be able to walk all the way around. The next thing we need is the water bowl. And we just dig that in a little bit. Again, making sure it's not too close to the sides and that there's enough room for your hatchling to easily walk around the bowl, as we don't want your hatchling to overbalance and end up upside down in the water bowl. Water bowls need to be shallow so that your hatchling can easily step in and out of the bowl. Some examples of water bowls that are suitable are this resin reptile feeding bowl, which is four and a half inches wide by four and a quarter long by half an inch high or you could use a plastic lid. 
This example is seven and a half inches diameter by half an inch high. But you may find that your hatchling may tip this up once it gets bigger as it's quite light. You'll need to put your hatchling's food on a hard surface. So for example, you can use a terracotta saucer like you can see in this picture, or you can use a piece of slate. This is so that your hatchling will naturally wear down its beak and nails as it eats. Then we can add in some cuttlefish. And the next thing we need to do is set up their basking area. So we need a piece of paving slab or a bit of slate that we can use to go under their basking lamp. So I'll just go and grab that. I'm using here a piece of paving slab. It is quite chunky so I've had to scrape away some soil right down to the bottom of the tub. And we can place that in the basking area. What we're aiming for here is for the paving slab or slate to be level with the substrate. So when they walk off the slab they don't just drop off the side and injure themselves. So now we can see that the slab is level with the substrate and there's a slight slope where I've had to build up the substrate around the slab to achieve this. Just before your hatchling arrives you can put some damp moss underneath the log to create a humid hide. To do this I put a handful of moss in clean water to hydrate it for about 10 seconds, then squeeze out all the excess water so it's damp but not soggy and then pop it under the log. As well as creating a humid hide I'd also recommend lightly spraying the substrate once a day with clean water to keep the humidity levels up in your tortoise table. You can obviously make their tortoise table a bit more interesting for them and have different stones as long as they're quite large and they're not going to try and eat them. Also having stones or pebbles helps your hatchling get in and out of the food bowl a lot easier, plus they don't drag the substrate into their food as much. You can also have some tortoise safe plants in your tortoise table or you can have fake plants from a reptile shop like you can see in this picture. Plants are ideal to offer enrichment or interest for your tortoise and also offer another hiding place for your hatchling. You could also add some weed trays into your tortoise table as long as they're buried into the substrate. For example, these are some weed trays that I have in another tub that can easily be swapped over when needed. The final bit to do is to get the heating and lighting set up. So here's an example of how to set up the heating and lighting and the stand that I've used. This is a very basic wooden stand that goes over the tub. This is the UVB strip light and under here is the UVA UVB basking bulb. And the basking bulb holder is attached by a hook to a piece of wood on top. And the UVB tube is attached with the fixings that came with the tube. The yellow bulb that you can see in the background is actually the ceramic bulb heater and I use this at night time to give off extra heat if they need it. And at the other end of these three tubs that are joined together I have a similar setup. So I've got the UVB basking bulb and holder and this is attached with a piece of chain um, to the top of a greenhouse stand. And I also have the yellow ceramic bulb heater in this end of the table as well as another strip light that goes halfway across the middle tub as well. I have the UVB strip light and the UVB basking bulb on timers and these are on for about 12 hours a day in the summer and in the winter I normally reduce these to match the daylight hours that we have here in the UK. And the yellow ceramic bulb heater is plugged into a Habistat thermostat and this will kick in if it drops below 22 degrees C. I've also added a thermostatically controlled heater into this room as the radiators are switched off so it'll keep the room nice and warm especially on cold winter nights. Leopard tortoises are particularly sensitive to incorrect temperatures and getting this wrong could ultimately be fatal for your tortoise. So what we need to aim for is for the daytime temperature to be between 24 to 28 degrees C. The basking area temperatures need to be between 30 and 32 degrees C and nighttime temperatures should be around 22 degrees C but should never go below 20 degrees C as your hatchling could become very ill with pneumonia and other respiratory problems.
Also, it's important to make sure the temperatures never go too high either, as your little hatchling could become dehydrated very quickly, which again could be fatal. So to get this right, we need to use thermometers in your tortoise table so that we can check and adjust the temperatures before your hatchling arrives. Here we're looking at the daytime temperatures and we want the basking area to be between 30 and 32 degrees C and the area that's further away from the heat source to be around 24 to 28 degrees C. What I'm using to check the temperatures is a Reptile digital thermometer and it also has a minimum and maximum setting which I find really useful to see the hottest and coldest temperatures that the tortoise table gets to. So here the cooler area is 24 degrees C which is okay and under the basking lamp it's 32 degrees C. The thermometer that I'm using in this clip is a reptile dial thermometer and these are very cheap but they don't give the minimum or maximum temperatures. And at night time when the basking lamp is turned off the whole of the tortoise table should be around 22 degrees C. So we've covered setting up your tortoise table. Now I'll briefly go through what you need to do to join the tubs together like you've seen in the previous photos. If anyone wants me to do a video on this then please let me know in the comments below. First you'll need to drill a 4 inch hole using a hole saw at one end of the tub and then do the same for the other tub that you're going to join together. Then cut a small section of 4 inch tumble dryer vent hose with wire cutters. Then feed the hose between the two tubs and then attach the tumble dryer connector to each end of the hose inside the tub and secure the connector to the hose with cable ties. The next clip shows the completed tunnel between the tubs. Next I'll go through when you need to set up your tortoise table. I recommend setting up your tortoise table at least 48 hours before you get your hatchling so that you can monitor and adjust the temperatures both during the day in the warm and cold areas of the table as well as overnight when the basking lamps are turned off. Also if your substrate is a bit on the damp side then it will give it time to dry out before your hatchling arrives. The final point that I want to go through is about breeders or sellers. Please don't get pressured into getting your hatchling by a breeder or seller before you're ready as it's really important that you can offer the correct environment to your new arrival so it would be healthy and happy. Also, please avoid pushy breeders or sellers that seem in a rush to make a quick sale or those that don't ask many questions about your setup or those that don't offer advice as they may be too busy focusing on making money rather than focusing on the welfare of your hatchling. And finally, don't be afraid to ask your breeder lots of questions before you get your hatchling as well as making sure the breeder is happy to offer advice once you have your hatchling. So in summary, the key points we've covered to get set up for your hatchling are find a suitable place indoors for at least the first four years have a suitable outdoor enclosure ready for when the temperatures permit use an open top tortoise table with solid sides your hatchling's enclosure should be roughly 10 times the length of your tortoise. Check the temperatures are in the correct ranges and make sure you choose a good breeder. And to summarise the items required in your tortoise table, you'll need to choose a suitable substrate. Um, my recommendation is topsoil mixed with clay pit sand. You'll need a basking bulb which contains UVA and UVB and you'll need the basking bulb holder. You'll need dishes for food and water. If you want more information on what to feed your hatchling, then I've got another video that goes through this in more detail. The water that you need to give your hatchling can be normal tap water, or a better option would be rainwater or filtered water, or you can use cold boiled water. You'll need a piece of cuttlefish and some thermometers to check the temperatures and a hide with some damp moss so you can create a humid area. You could also get a fluorescent UVB tube with the controller if it's needed. And that's it! Thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed the video and found it useful then please click the thumbs up and also subscribe to see my other videos.